uh, to finish. Uh, the title of my of my thesis is um, uh, Mathematization in Ibn Sina and Al-Biruni Correspondence and Sirafi Mata Divay. Okay, Mathematization in Ibn Sina Al-Biruni Correspondence and Sirafi Mata Divay. I mentioned earlier to Abdul Rahman, it is very risky to ask me to talk about this, this topic, especially when I, uh, it's just over a month ago that I I presented it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an exam setting and I'm still in the process of uh, doing corrections uh, on my thesis and I, I myself, I'm, I'm worried that that uh, this presentation would be too technical but perhaps I'd like just to share uh, how uh, the importance and how uh, how I came to work on this this topic okay so for that i'd like to share the the slides uh how do i do that file uh, Rahman, how do i share the how do i share okay share, so, screen. share, share yes. screen. down you will see a green up pointing um what you call arrow yeah. Here, and then you can choose between uh, share. Yeah, good. All right. That's good. Okay, okay but I've renamed the, the slides into logic and uh, language and logic in the civilization of Islam. Okay. Um, Okay, in, in, in our civilization, if, if, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we've, uh, we've discussed this many times before. For those of you who have, who have attended WISE, whether WISE in Sweden or in Malaysia, or have uh, attended uh, the many uh, talks or seminars organized by Kathy or Hakim or HICMA or SMFR, uh, they, 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 they must have uh, been impressed upon the importance of language. Uh, in the worldview of Islam. If there's one thing that uh, Professor al Atas and Atif al Atas emphasize again and again, and uh, for, for us to take heed from, for us to, uh, to, to, to be careful about, is on this subject of language. Because uh, in Islam, language reflects ontology. Okay? language reflects ontology if we if we study subjects such as anthropology uh, or the social sciences or even linguistics we may come across theories on language claiming that language is something that is uh, developed out of convention that is, it is purely conventional, that it is something that is the a creation of the human mind, the creation of human activity through our interaction, through our engagement with our surroundings, so, and, and our ability to utter and write and articulate and, and emerge from that what we know as, as language. So it is purely conventional, it is constructed. And by extension, as we go into this modern world, the, the day and age where we are, we are living in today, the, this idea of language is being extended further into things like mathematical language and even uh, computer language or programming language. They are all conventional. It's, it is constructed. It is something that we, we develop. So, so in the end, if, if we push this to its uh, logical conclusion, it, uh, it is as if uh, the ideas that is captured or encapsulated by words or terminologies that we use in language is purely conventional, meaning it is up to agreement or convention by the society. Okay, so I'm, 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 I know I'm making sweeping generalization. I'm, I'm just uh, giving a, a very rough and broad overview of uh, some ideas uh, on language. Whereas in Islam, in our history, if we regard Islam as a religion and a civilization, we, we, we realize that 
right from the very beginning, the emphasis on language is very much present. Okay? First of all, the Quran itself. Uh, the Quran itself is the greatest of all mu'jizat, is the greatest of all miracles. If we recount the, the stories of earlier prophets, early, earlier messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of them are given, were given uh, miracles of mu'jizat. And, and they come in various forms and various uh, types and in, 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 in many, many forms. Okay? Uh, even the Prophet Sina Muhammad Wasallam, he, he was given mu'jizat. However, the, 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 the highest form of this mu'jizat is the Qur'an. And if we recall the seerah of the Prophet Wasallam, there were many instances where the uh, the, 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 the people, the Arabs of, of Mecca during the early stage of uh, revelation, they demand proofs in the form of, in the form of miracles. When they want, please change this, uh, uh, this, uh, this barren land into gardens and rivers. Please ask your God to bring forth angels. Please this and that and so on and so forth. And, and the Quran replies through revelation, also Ta'ala revealed to the Prophet verses in the Quran that says, have they, have they, have they not seen the, the mountains and the day and night, the sun and the moon? Meaning to say, is, 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 are these, aren't all these existences miracle enough for you that you demand you know, extraordinary things? Aren't this existence extraordinary enough? You yourself are, are, are not able to, 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 to create any of these things. Not even a fly. So aren't this extraordinary enough? And, and the, the highest form of mu'jizat is the Qur'an itself. And the Qur'an is revealed in the form of language. And this language is not any language. It is Arabic language. And it is not any Arabic language. It is a special kind of Arabic language. It is a, 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 a kind of a, an Arabic that is known by the Arabs at that time. At the same time, for many of, for all of them, for many of them, in the beginning, they find that the verses sound strange. That the words used are familiar words. I mean, they, they know the words. However, the meaning is sort of adjusted a little here and there. The, the formulations of the verses is somewhat peculiar. And, and there are words that they have not heard before, like Ar-Rahman. They, they have not used that word before. And suddenly it is Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And we have Abdul Rahman, several Abdul Rahmans here. Yes? So, so, so to the Arabs, it's, it sounds strange. They cannot pinpoint you know, what, what, what is this? They, 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 they know poetry and they know that this is not poetry. They know soothsayers and they know that this is not soothsaying. They want to say that the prophet is a crazy person and they, they entrusted him with their goods, entrusted him with their, their wealth. So he, he, he cannot be crazy and so on and so forth. So the Quran is the highest form of mu'jizat and it comes in the form of language. So this language, according to Professor al Attas, is the very language that reflects ontology. Okay, what do we mean by language that reflects ontology? It means that through this language, through this Quranic language, we can come to know reality. We can come to be able to articulate and arrive at the meaning of things in reality as, as we experience them, including the physical reality, the, the, the manifest reality that we are in now. So it is a language that gives, that, that gives you knowledge, that leads you towards knowledge of reality and realities. It, it is a language by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself. Okay? So basically that is what, what we mean when we say language. And we know from our history also that right from the after the passing of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, the time of the Khulafa al-Rashidun and the subsequent uh, generations, 
right from the beginning, one of the the, the most pertinent issue that was that they were forced to address was language. How to preserve this language in order for those who come later, generations later, will still have access to the same reality and truth, which is the Quran. Can have the same access to this fountain of knowledge, which is the Quran. And so they developed the science of the, the linguistic sciences, the science of the sciences of Nahu, uh, Sarf, and, and the rest, uh, the, the, the uh, Balagha, uh, the science of definitions of Tafsir. It is no coincidence that, uh, that the, the, the very first Tafsir of the Quran by Ibn Abbas was precisely done in order to preserve or to explain the meaning of terms, the meaning of words. Um, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ali, Karamallah Wajahahu, uh, Abdul Aswad Abdul Ali, when they, they face you know, the, one of the first uh, challenge of in, in, in problems that they face as, the, 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 as Islam was uh, spread beyond the, the Arab lands was the possibility of the corruption of the Arabic language. Hence, they developed this science of Nahu. And the science of Nahu quickly developed. You, you, you know this history, yes? There were two schools, the, the, the Basra school and the Kufa school. And, and scholars emerged like um, Imam Ahmad Al-Khalil Al-Tarahidi. Uh, he, he was the first to uh, develop or compose the very first Arabic dictionary, a dictionary of, of Arabic language, Kitab al -Ain. And in that uh, book, uh, the, 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 the first problem that he faced was a mathematical problem, a, a problem of combinatorics. How, 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 does, how, how, do we, how do we exhaustively account for all possible Arabic terms derived from these trilateral roots? or quadrilateral roots or quintilateral roots of the Arabic language. So, so these sciences developed very early. It, 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 it was amongst the first sciences that was developed in our civilization. Way before the dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary, of, uh, the, the Oxford English Dictionary, which is uh, today is the most authoritative dictionary of the English language. Before, even before uh, the, the, the preservation of the Arabic language was done in, a, in such a meticulous way such that even the, the, the Judaic tradition, the, the tradition of the, 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 the Jewish religion, and they, they have, uh, they have their, their Torah and their Talmud, but, after, but, but they've lost this, um, the, the, the root meanings of words. So it's very difficult for them to trace, you know, the, the, the words to, to its original semantic feel. And because of that, it's very difficult for them to, to, to develop their, their theology at the, the later stage of theology. And they, they, they revive this tradition of going back to the root meaning because they are, they are, they are, Hebrew is also Semitic language. So they have roots as well, but they've lost this, this, the system. They, they don't have... Uh, the comprehensive record of that. But the, 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 the tradition was revived by uh, a, 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 a 13th century Jewish scholar, Musa ibn Maimun or Maimonides. And Musa ibn Maimun uh, developed this by benefiting from the, 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 the linguistic sciences already developed in the Arabic world, in, in the Muslim world, in the Islamic world, because he was he was living in the, in the Islamic world. So, and, and so it, through the, the, the sciences, of the linguistic sciences that was developed by the Muslims, the Jewish tradition gets their, their revival. So this is the, the, the degree of importance uh, Islam put on, this, on, on language. Because it is uh, the means by which we arrive at meaning. It is the, the means by which we arrive at knowledge. Okay. Um, so what, 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 what has this to do with anything? What has this to do with, with my thesis? 
if you look at my thesis, the original title was mathematization. Okay, and uh, why do why do we why do we need to talk about mathematization? Okay, the the, the reason is that something happened in the 16th or 17th century Europe. Okay, so sw Swedish people, so you are right in the middle of of all of this. Although although Sweden is a bit north, it's a Nordic, uh, and and it's a, it's a kind of a late comer to this whole thing. So the, the Germans and the, the French, they were they were they, they were the big the big guns. Eh? The, the, the Swedish people, the, the Swedish history, they they, they 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 came late into prominence. However, you 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 are also in the in in the midst of of all of this. Okay, you are you are, you are direct. You are, you are you are very close to the source of a profound change that happened to our world, human being as a whole, which happened to be in Europe in 17th century. Okay, historians of science call it the the the, the scientific revolution, and there of there are many debates of what what constitutes the scientific revolution, which we will not go. I uh, will not go through here, but one of the key characteristics of the scientific revolution, whether you go, whether you are highlighting Copernicus or Galileo or Isaac Newton or Leibniz for that matter, if you are pro-Germany, then you are Leibniz. If you are pro-English, then you would say Isaac Newton. It's, it's the, this, this idea of mathematization. Okay? What is this idea of mathematization? Is that our language? When we speak, when we write through our language, this what what they call as natural language. The words or the sentences are quite vague as far as natural science is concerned. When you want to describe a phenomena, this natural language is quite vague, meaning you can you can bicker on. You know, sometimes you cannot come to an agreement on on a, on a particular theory simply due to different interpretations of words. And so, some of these scientists, this uh, or, or shall we say, natural philosophers at that time, they they have, they have not yet called themselves scientists for the discipline or the the, the, the discipline that we call science was not yet in existence. The, the people like Galileo would say. Nature, this universe, is like an open book. So first, we, 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 we notice that this idea of nature as an open book. That sounds very familiar. The, the, the Christians, they did, not say, they did not speak like that before. Suddenly, they speak nature as an open book. So that, that, that is one, one, uh, not one key, one, one, one peculiar cue for us to take heed. But then there's another one. Eh? After, the, after, after Galileo claimed that nature is an open book, this book is written in the language of mathematics. In order for us to understand natural phenomena, we have to understand mathematics. Without which, we have to understand the language of mathematics. Without this language, there is no way there's no hope for us to be able to understand natural phenomena. If from there, what happens after that is a consequence of that. Okay? So until today, any theory that is, that is qualifiable, that, is, that, that deserves to be relegated as scientific, must be formulated through the language of mathematics. If it is not mathematizable, then it is not scientific. If you cannot, if you cannot give the mathematical formulation, or if you cannot state the hypothesis, or relate the statement of the hypothesis to some kind of mathematical or of a mathematical model, then it is not scientific. If you cannot explain this pandemic, this uh, the, the COVID nineteen through some kind of a mathematical model then there's no way for us to scientifically 
able to give a proper response to it. And that is why Sweden decides not to do lockdown because of a particular interpretation of a particular mathematical model. Yes? And, and I, I, we had long debates. Uh, <laughs> I had long debate with uh, Yasri on this. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, in today's world, okay, uh, no, now we are, we are like 300 years after the so-called scientific revolution. So we are we're very much into this mathematization without even saying anything about this mathematization. Okay? For anything to be scientific, for, for any knowledge to be reliable, it has to be mathematizable. And subsequently, we make that jump that anything that is not mathematizable is not scientific. Anything that is not mathematizable is not scientific. Therefore, anything that is not mathematizable is not reliable. Anything that is not mathematizable cannot be deemed as knowledge. Anything that is not mathematizable does not tell anything about reality. So if that, you know, if that happens, okay, what happens to other sciences that is not mathematizable? So a lot of the sciences in, in our tradition are non-mathematical sciences. So if we if we follow this logic, then we come to a to a situation where we are forced to make this categorization between knowledge that is that are scientific and knowledge that are not scientific, and a lot of knowledge that falls into the category of religious sciences suddenly become non-scientific knowledge. Okay, once we once we we we, uh, we we subscribe ourselves to this kind of categorization, so hence uh, it begs the question: Okay, is there a limit to mathematization? Okay, so if you are if you are living in the West, they they would say you no. Know, if if you can mathematize, mathematize. I mean, there's no you know, there's no no limit to knowledge, which 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 we understand, we acknowledge that there's no limit to knowledge. However, there's limit of truth. Okay, now we go back to Professor Atas again. This is another uh, like main message that Professor Atas always remind us is that there is limit of truth. There are limits of truth in every object of knowledge. Knowing this limit is wisdom. So the, 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 the thesis that I was working on initially, the initial impetus for this thesis is to, to identify, can we come to some kind of a conclusion of some kind of a limit towards mathematization. So that was the initial, uh, the initial uh, objective of the thesis. Uh, however, as I work on the thesis, uh, the, uh, you know, you realize that uh, that that objective is not achievable in the form of a thesis. A, a thesis is, is too small to encapsulate that objective. It is a lifelong. It's a it's a it's a, it's a huge subject to tackle so you need to limit yourself so in limiting myself because i had to do a like broad survey on the works done by our scholars and we realized that we have a different categorization of the sciences if we want to look for issues relating to mathematization if you try to look at works on mathematics you will not find any discussion on mathematization they're not done in mathematics you want to find philosophy of mathematics? There's no such thing as philosophy of mathematics in our civilization. You look for in Kalam, okay, there's, there's something there. Okay? But then, uh, we, Alhamdulillah, we, I, I find two, uh, two works that I, I find to be relevant. And these two works are quite early, are very early. Uh, the, the, one is the, the correspondence between Ibn Sina and Al-Biruni. Ibn Sina and Al-Biruni uh, they send letters eh, asking question and replying to the question. And the other one is a debate by Imam Abu Sa'id as sirafi and Abu Bishr Mata ibn Yunus. Okay? Imam Abu Sa'id as sirafi was a scholar okay? and also a linguist. He's known to be uh, one of the imam in, in, in grammar, in, in language. He was the, the sharih, the, 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 the one who wrote a commentary on uh, Al-Kitab by Imam Sibawai. Imam Sibawai is like the, the giant of Arabic grammar. 
And Sibawai, who was a student of uh, Imam Ahmad Al Khalil Al Farahidi. So, and and interestingly, in this debate, this debate was uh, happened live. Uh, there was a, a discussion on the role of the, uh, the, the the relationship between logic and grammar. And in that debate, the, the debate between the, the this the, the discussion on this the nature of logic and grammar is very similar to the discussion on if we are to have such discussion again today it will be between mathematical language and natural language it will the, the subject matter is is this so it, it, i find it very intriguing because this is the issue that we face today if you go to the root issue that underlies whatever that that is deemed to be uh, the, on, or the nature of science and so on, and knowledge and so on, we come to this, you know, this, this, this debate. And lo and behold, you see the same, the very same issues was debated upon in, I don't know, this is like nine, this is 10th century, 900s. That was more than 1,000 years ago. Okay? So knowing that, that we have been discussing and debating on issues, on these kinds of issues like over a thousand years ago, you know, makes us realize that you know, scientific progress can just progress. As, you know, you know, the, the progression of science is in the, the giving more details on, on natural phenomena. But the underlying questions or the underlying principles or discussions or debates on things that are fundamental that underlies all these sciences they are the same so over generations each and every one of us all human beings those who are you know have intelligence they would come you know to they would come across the same questions and the same issues again and again and in, in those same very same issues are the issues of how do you attain knowledge and how do you attain certainty and how do you attain what what does it mean to know and so on and so forth and um and and uh, to me that 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 is one one of the the most fundamental uh questions that that we face today lah. okay I'll, I'll i'll stop here for now and Let's uh, let's hear if we have any uh, comments or questions on the presentation that I've given so far. No. Um. We had uh, forgot one thing that used to be our uh, customary way of starting events. So, um, Brother Abdul Aziz, would you uh, like to honor us with a few uh, verses from the Quran? We forget to start with that, and normally we also end with dua. So, Abdul Aziz. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العظيم Barakalafik. And first question, Sidi, um, is on the chat. Um, Sister Sarah, uh, can you mention again what is the objective that you want to achieve from analyzing this topic? Okay, there, there's the, the, there's, um, can we see, uh, perhaps we divide the objectives into two. One is the broad objective. The broad objective is to have an idea of the limits of mathematization. So that is the, the broad objective. 
initially that was uh, the objective of my, my thesis, but you, it is too big. You, you cannot finish. It's impossible to, to, to come to a finality or conclusion in, in a thesis. Uh, and therefore, uh, I have to you know, reduce the objective to, to something that is more manageable. And the, 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 the more manageable objective is, um, let me share the screen again. Uh, the more manageable objective is uh, are these. Okay. Okay. First objective is to reappraise the the works, um, because I I'm I'm working on the debate and correspondence. So now I I make the uh, the the documents as the I, I put the documents at the center stage. So instead of uh, of talking about mathematization in general, uh, so now I'm I'm. I'm, I'm highlighting the document. I'm saying that, okay, first, the, the correspondence have not been studied. Okay, now I want to study this correspondence. And the debate has been studied, but not from the point of view of mathematization. So I'm studying it from the point of view of mathematization. So I'm re-highlighting two docu historical documents. Uh, and secondly, is to identify the elements of mathematization. Because uh, the discussion on, on mathematization is a recent dis discussion. Uh, we don't talk about mathematization in the past. However, analyzing these documents, we find issues of mathematization being discussed. Although they don't say this is mathematization, they don't have the, this idea of mathematization yet. However, the, 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 the problems that they face are the same problems faced by this mathematization thesis. And the third one is something, uh, it's, it's uh, something that was described by, uh, by uh, Shahid Rahman, Tony Street, and Hassan Tahiri um, in the University of Cambridge. And in, in one of their, uh, the proceedings of their work, they, 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 they mentioned in the introduction, okay, to the surprise of modern historians of science and philosophy, the same kind of questions, which would allegedly be new topics, scientific, specific to the 20th century concerning the nature of knowledge and its progress were already raised more than 11 centuries earlier in the context of Arabic tradition. This is a major gap, not in the development of science, but a fundamental flaw in the writing of its history caused by the confusion of the history of science and the political and social history. So there's a, it's a major flaw a major gap in the in the historical narrative when it comes to the the history of ideas or the history of science. So the 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 the, the, the reason for this gap is because most of the writing for the past two hundred years were done by Western scholars. We have not contributed much to the writing of this history, the history of ideas, history of science. And because of that History is seen solely from the perspective of Western, of, of Western worldview. And, and, and if in, in a more globalized world, and this it very easily, this very peculiar Western centric, Eurocentric worldview, uh, view of history can be made universal. It's universal. In fact, it has, it's already been, uh, it has already happened in such, in such a way that that is the only way for us to see history and understand history. That is the only way that we can understand science. It becomes a problem when, when you try to put things in their proper places based on the worldview of Islam. Suddenly, you get accusations here and there that it is not scientific, that it's not historical, and so on and so forth. So, we have to in, be involved and engage this uh, this process of uh, writing this historical narrative. So the, the objective of my thesis is to contribute in that sense. So of course, I, it's not a work of one person. This is why, uh, this is, okay, now this is the, my objective, this is my Nia, uh, in, in sharing this with uh, our Swedish friends, brothers and sisters. Because you, you are the closest a bunch of people that I know living in, in, in Europe 
and it's rooted there. You, you live there, you study there, you work there. You are very conscious of its problems, and you are you are also very conscious of your Muslim identity. You are you are you are you are very you are you are aware, and you care enough of you being Muslim, and and your religion being Islam, and you care enough to establish it as truth, and yet you live in this environment where it is, you know, secularized through and through. So, quote unquote, secularized through and through. And so you, you, you are in the midst of it. So now, for me to, uh, I, I invite you, <laughs> all of you, if, uh, I know it, this, this will take time, uh, perhaps a generation or two, but you have to have this in your vision, that eventually, there must be amongst you who engage in this. I know SMFR has its problems and Sweden has its problems, but if we, if we, if we are to move forward you know, in history while retaining the roots, you know, retaining the roots to our religion, we cannot avoid this, these issues. So there must be amongst you or eventually people, Muslims amongst you, who are engaged in this kind of uh, uh, this kind of discourse and to contribute in this the, 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 the development of this historical narrative. This is also another, you know, there are many things that Prophet Atas always, you know, emphasize. One is language and then that limit of truth, knowing this limit is wisdom. And another one is history. He, he, Again and again, he emphasized that history is farduain. Today, in today's world, for Muslims, history, knowing history is farduain. There's no way that we can move forward without a profound understanding of history. Not just Islamic history, not just the history of the Islamic civilization, the civilization of Islam, but also the civilization of Islam vis-a-vis -vis world civilization, meaning Islam as world history, to understand the forms and manner by which Islam as a religion, as a deen, influenced or played a major role in the developments of history throughout the ages. So we have to have a very clear and profound and deep understanding of that process, without which we are like rootless. Yeah? We are we're like floating in the air without roots. You know, when the wind blows east, we go east. When the wind blows west, we go west. When the wind blows north, we go north. From Stockholm to Gothenburg and to northern uh, places in Sweden. We, we, we can go anywhere we want, but as long as we have the, the roots. And this, this root, one of the most potent way of establishing these roots is to understand history in a profound way. So that is my, my answer to the question of the objective. So we have the, the broad objective and I, I also have a, the, the small objective of the thesis. And maybe Shaima have done two PhDs, so she knows this very well. Initially, when you engage upon the research, you have, you're, you're very ambitious and you, you, you want to solve so many problems. And suddenly, you realize, no, no. Uh, we have to be humble. We, we can only solve one specific thing at a time. Uh, but even if we solve this one small problem, do not do not uh, see it as something small, because it is a work. It's a, it is a collective work. It's a collective effort. So little by little, uh, then we can have this culture of knowledge, and we can have our university. We can have you, know, you can have the the civilization of Islam breathing. You know? With the, with the heart pumping again in today, today's world, even in, with the science and technology, the AI and so on and so forth, you can have the civilization of Islam at the center of it. It's not impossible. It's very possible. Okay? Wallahu alam. Okay, Haja, you're late.
I just came in. I haven't listened to anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a question from uh, Abdul Ghani. Uh, the more mathematization that occurs in a society, the more materialistic the society becomes. And religion and God becomes less important in that society because God cannot be measured. Is this a correct insight to take from your work and objective? Uh, to some extent, yes. Broadly, yes. We can say that uh, although, although, here's the thing. Uh, <clears throat> we're not against mathematization. Okay? That, that, that needs to be, uh, to be, to be emphasized. When we, when, when we sort of criticize the, you know, the, the overly mathematized um, nature of modern science, we're not, we're not against mathematization. Muslim scholars, Muslim intellectuals engage in mathematization right from the beginning. We're not scared. We're not, we, we, we never shied away from any of this, from any disciplines or any you know, fields of study or any knowledge or any wisdoms that we can learn from other civilizations or from people of the past or from the West or the East. We never shied away from any of, or any of this. So when we say, uh, when, we, when, we, when we work on identifying the limits of mathematization, we're trying to put this whole idea of mathematization, this process of mathematizing phenomena or, 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 or the sciences, to its proper place. Because if we are able to put it in, the, in its proper place, it will flourish. Uh, sometimes we, we, because we see the developments that has been going on in the West generally in today's world, you know, they, 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 they have contributed a lot towards the, well, the civilization that as, as we know it today. They solve many, many problems. But at the same time, they create a lot of problems as well that they could not, could not resolve. The, the problem, the, the climate change, the, the environmental problem is something that is, you know, I mean, uh, if, if you study it to its roots, I dare say n none of the environmental scientists know precisely the real solution. I mean, the, 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 for sure, the, the, the real solution for this environmental, environmental crisis. For some time, they say it's green technology and so on and so forth. But recently, they've been exposed that this, this green technology would cause other sets of problems. So, so it is not, you know, the, and, and many other things, okay? And, and to us, okay, coming from the worldview of Islam, we can see that the root of this problem is that we have transgressed limits, okay, on multiple grounds. And when we say we've transgressed limits to a culture, or people coming from a culture where they don't acknowledge any kind of limit. You know, everything goes. You, you, you just do it. You know, you can be, anyone can be anything. You know, if you have the will, you have the way. I mean, that kind of, that kind of uh, self-empowerment, you know, that kind of uh, culture, I mean, it will sound very as if, as if we are anti-progress. Okay? Whereas we're not anti-progress. We're, we're saying that if we are not careful, anything that is beyond its limits would lead to its demise, would lead to its, its own destruction, including the modern world, including modern science, including the, the civilization as we know it today. And notice that the civilization as we know it today, relatively speaking, from the historical point of view, is relatively new. America is just in existence like around 200 years ago. You have civilization or you have empires or nations that have survived in, a, in longer periods of time in, 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 the past, in past history. So relatively speaking, 200 years is not that long. I mean, it is, it's not, we, 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 don't, we don't have, we, we don't know yet exactly what is to become of this civilization. Okay, so, so that is the, what, what we have to be careful of. And so as, as we engage in this process, we have to stress the point that we're not anti-West, we're not anti-development and, and progress. We're trying to articulate the, a proper idea of development and, and progress. To articulate science 
as something that has its limits. And if we can know and understand these limits and apply this knowledge of li this li this knowledge of limits to our study, including empirical study, social study, humanistic study, what we will get is we will get a more you know, you know, an even a, a flourishing culture of knowledge where it will not decay into meaninglessness. And today there there are, there are so many people who are you know, who complain. We have we we hear this complaint many times that they, they study they, they, they are smart they are very educated they have wealth and and suddenly they say oh, nothing uh, there's no meaning to any of this and how, how is it that there's no meaning to it? <laughs> or meaning is just relative and every uh, so you decay I mean, we, you you come to a, a state of doubt and, and cynicism and so on and so forth so uh, we can say we, we're not okay. When we say the more mathematization that occurs, the more materialistic, we have to understand why is that so. Okay, the reason why is that why that is so is the real reason. We, this, we have to understand philosophy, philosophy of science and some kind of some epistemology uh, to really give justice to this uh, this question. And Professor Zaini's uh, classes, uh, Professor Zaini was, uh, is writing a, an article soon to be published. Inshallah, once it's published, I, I really recommend all members of SMFR to read that article. Once it's published, please, uh, please uh, remind me to, uh, to, 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 to share with you. Or Haja, once, once uh, Haja knows this article, we've read it, but it's not published yet. Once it's published, uh, I, I, I really encourage all SMFR members to really read this article, uh, discuss about it, you, you discuss amongst yourself, what, what, you know, try to, uh, to, to you know, unpack the meaning. And, and perhaps uh, once you've done enough discussion, we can have a session with Prof Zaini to really uh, to, 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 to explain the whole thing. Because therein, uh, in that article, although Prof Zaini didn't mention it explicitly, Therein lies what I would understand as this limit of mathematization. Uh, how to make mathematization not uh, that, uh, how to make mathematization not lead people to be more, more materialistic. There's a reason why it became like that. But uh, at, 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 to, to, to explain that would take a long time. Okay, so I'll, I'll just stop there. So uh, your, uh, your question is this a correct insight to take from your work and objective? Yes. But, uh, no, <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, no in the sense that uh, we're, we're not anti-mathematization. We're just saying that we have to recognize the limit of truth in every object of knowledge. As long as we recognize that, then it's fine because we know its limits. We know what to do with it. We know what it means. Uh, we do not over-interpret uh, or misinterpret or, or overextend its its importance or implication beyond what it's supposed to be. Okay, as long as we respect that, then mathematization, modern science is, well, it's fine. Um, uh, Muzamil, the mini king, question. If we can't find a mathematical model for a scenario, does it mean that it is not scientific right now? And in later time, the scenario can thereafter be explained by a mathematical model because there we have learned another way to interpret in later time. <laughs> at the moment, at the moment, yes. And if you, um, any anyone who has worked in the in in anything scientific, if any academic who is involved in scientific research whether it be physics, engineering, or biology, or medical sciences, they, they know this very well. Because first, uh, what, whatever that you, okay, if, suppose you have a hypothesis and you want to present a hypothesis. I have, I have a theory or, or a hypothesis. Um, I don't know, I mean, Shaima may come with, <laughs> with better examples. So you say in stem cell, I have this hypothesis and you want to explain that hypothesis and publish it in a journal. And they would demand data they, 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 on what basis, on what data or what uh, 
do you base this hypothesis on? Okay, you, you, you can't just okay, explain your hypothesis theoretically and philosophically and expect it to be published in a scientific journal. No, they would demand data. Meaning you have to design an experiment, you have to collect the data. Okay, suppose you design an experiment, you collect the data and then you just, just put all the data in, the, in, the, in, the, in your publication. Will they publish your, your, your paper? No, they will not. No, that, that data has to be encapsulated in some kind of mathematical model. I mean, you can't give us raw data. So, and that mathematical model becomes your hypothesis. So that is the way things function now. And for good reason. I mean, and uh, I'm not saying that we should not do this. I mean, we, uh, we, we understand the, 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 the development of, the, of natural sciences or, or physical sciences have come to an extent of precision in such a way that the, the accepted, reliable, and conventional way of us, you know, exchanging information and exchanging theories and uh, criticizing and responding to, to criticisms and, and, and uh, discussing scientific theories is, is this. And it is a good convention. Okay? So, to the, uh, and, uh, but, uh, but my contention is, or do we have any idea of a limit to this mathematization? Can, can, we, can we apply the same standard or the same procedure to all knowledge with regards to, you know, uh, even the social sciences, uh, things that, that regards to ethics, things that regards to even interpretation of history. I mean, is it appropriate to, for us to put to apply the, the same, the exact same st standard to all uh, manner of investigation. So that is the, the issue that I'm, that I'm tackling. So the question, uh, if we, is this, is, if we cannot find, okay, so, so the, the answer to the question is yes, so the statement is correct. If we cannot find a mathematical model for a scenario, today it, it will not be considered a scientific. Until if later on, if later on you can come up with a math mathematical model, then it becomes scientific because it's publishable in, in a scientific journal. Other scientists can review it, can, can, can repeat the experiment, can check. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, it will be ignored completely. It will not be published in any reputable scientific journal. Thank you. Abdul Rahman. <clears throat> yes, Tadana. We also have this idea of multiplied learning, which means at the last uh, half an hour or 20 minutes and so, we uh, ask the audience to reflect um, what they have learned and uh, we share our reflections. And we also have uh, some time uh, for dua uh, at the end also as well inshallah so if you have a question or two that you want us to reflect on that would be good Stade Juan, are you trying to speak? We cannot hear you. No, uh, we, no, we do. Yeah, I'm supposed to say something. I, I thought I'm supposed to wait for questions or reflections. No, if, if you had a, a question uh, for us to reflect upon as a summary of this, uh, what we understand, what we take with us, and then yes. <clears throat> so I have to ask questions. Preferably, yes. Preferably. Oh, no, I'm not prepared for this. What question should I ask? <laughs> if I have question, I will, I will ask. At, at, at the moment, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any question. So, I can. Well, like we used to ask, like, what did you learn today, or what can you take uh, from? Uh, what's your? Uh, 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 
points to take from uh, this uh, lesson today, okay. and things like that. Okay. What 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 do you learn today, and what? <laughs> <laughs> can you take from the stuff from the talk today? Or Yasri lah, like, let, like, let Yasri say something. I think they're going to ask for them. Yes. Okay, I'll make it from here. Okay, so uh, are you hearing me? Because I don't know if I'm. Uh, yes, yeah, oh. we can hear you. This. Men jag har inte dem. Men de har inte ingen som pratar. Va? Ingen som pratar. Jag vet inte. Alla är ju... Ja, det är du hörs bra. Okay. You, you heard okay. loud and clear, Yasri. So give us some reflection question. Yes, so... Uh, at, at the end, at the end, because to... Um, because to make uh, this uh, inclusive journey where we can also um, take with us um, uh, uh, understanding and also develop our pedagogical uh, pedagogical structure. We we like to uh, uh, also explore what the participant has uh, has has uh, uh, has uh, uh, constructed uh, in their minds from the things that has been uh, talked about, so that we also get a, a greater grasp of uh, the audience. Uh, interpretation of the information that has been brought forward. In that way, we can also uh, understand uh, the epistemological, epistemolog epistemological, and ontological um, uh, uh, barriers that also needs to be uh, uh, accessed to be able to bring certain information uh, uh, to fruitful. Uh, uh, implantation because sometimes when when people listen to something uh, it, what they understand and what they comprehend is is very much uh, connected to what they already knew before they listened and what kind of premises and assumptions they are carrying um, and by by doing this kind of reflection this is a pedagogy peda, pedagogy in Muslim peace movement uh, that is meant to um, extend and, and uh, 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 greatly uh, develop the, the people in the, I, I, that is taking part of uh, Muslim peace movement. Because if you just listen without actively reflecting and, 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 and discussing it, uh, it becomes information that does not become contextualized. Uh, and, and even if it's contextualized, it's not contextualized in a, in a manner where it can be analyzed, absorbed by leaders within the organization to also explore patterns of ontological and epistemological deficiencies that needs to be addressed. Uh, and, and if that exists, uh, it is very uh, difficult to move uh, uh, people's understanding uh, and, 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 and needs in the right direction. Uh, so, by 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 doing this, we 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 do not just focus on the the speaker, but we focus on the participants and their development, and that's the focus. So by by giving the participants uh, a, a, an opportunity to reflect upon what has been said, we we can uh, address these issues because most of the people within SMFR are with us long term. So we can work with them and we have coaching, we have uh, conversations, we have uh, you know, individualized pedagogical programs for everyone. So by, by taking part of the, these discussions, we can help them uh, analyze, structure, contextualize, uh, and, and have the supportive sciences and supportive knowledge to be able to ingest and, and, and develop ideas further uh, in uh, a, contextualized way with understanding of the assumptions and pres uh, presumptions of the speaker when they develop it. Um, so uh, with that, so we just understand why we do this and also to our uh, Malaysian brothers and sisters. Uh, so they also understand our methodology and, and how we work. Um, we, we then ask these questions. Um, so like from uh, 
uh, Ustad Ikhwans or Dr. Ikhwan. Congratulations, by the way. Um, his his uh, his uh, presentation. Uh, it is also very interesting to see uh, how do you understand this and how do you think uh, that this can be applicable uh, in in one way or another. What what uh, uh, Ustad Ikhwan has has uh, uh, presented. So that that will be the question. How had, have you understand the? How do you understand uh, the presentation that has been brought forward about uh, mathematization and language and logic, and how do you think uh, this can be applicable in one way or another uh, in your life uh, or in society or like how do you think that this can be applicable and can you connect it to something? So, what do you understand and how can you connect it uh, to? To, to your context. So. Two more favors, Stad uh, Yasri. For, uh, if you could uh, write the question on the chat for people uh, to go back to, that's one thing. And the other thing is actually, I will make you host. I have a Chromebook, so I cannot, um, what do you call, I cannot uh, manage uh, breakout rooms. So you could divide us to like small groups. We are 21 currently. Yes. So, and then I will also stop um, uh, um, recording so, so that people so, will let freely. Yes, so, so we uh, here, the, the Federation Board will be one discussion group uh, because we are already here, so it's much easier. But we yeah. will sort the rest of you into groups because we, we are, as you can, can see, we are like uh, a lot of people here. Uh, because yeah. we, we're having a Federation meeting. Uh, so, um, uh, and we, 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 we have a uh, Ikhwan break uh, for our Federation meeting and that, that will continue until uh, the end of Sunday. Uh, so... Uh, you can do that uh, manually, yes. Um, yes, so, so, so we will sort the rest of you into groups where you will be, be discussing because we won't be able to bring all of what you have said. So you, you go into small groups and then you have one person who uh, kind of... Uh, um, summarize uh, so so make sure you pick one in the group where, where you get as uh, put into smaller groups you you you, you choose one who will uh, summarize what you have said and then uh, the summarizer will be from each group will will uh, uh, bring forward um, uh, into the big group 